What is up, my degenerate brothers and sisters? This is Chad Stefan with Gershock, and you are watching yeah, I'm Local Best. Leila, I told you to take that shit. No, we are not using that tape. Turn it off right now. Turn uh, let me just switch over the camera real quick on something. And uh, I think we're ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, Lexi Line! Yeah, hell yeah! Yes! <laughs> hell yeah, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you. Lexi, do me a favor. Thanks. Please, uh, please uh, properly introduce yourself. Let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now and uh, plug and promote anything and everything. Uh, hello, guys. What's up? My name is Lexi Lane. Uh, I live in Los Angeles, California. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, L-E-X-I underscore L-A-Y-N-E, and that has all of my links to my music and everything. Okay, cool. Hell yeah. How long have you been yeah. a musician for? Um, you know, I feel like I was just, like, born a musician. Like, I've, I've been in musical theater since I was six. So I grew up like performing and being on a, like a massive stage performing, like that was my whole life from six to 19. Um, and then I started writing like my own music and getting into like my own creative world around like age 14. So I've been making my own music since I was about like 14 years old. So. Does, that, does that include like the harsh screaming vocals or just mostly like the clean singing yeah. stuff? The clean singing stuff. Yeah, the, the, the harsh vocals is actually very new, about like six months ago new. Okay, who, who did, was that like a producer thing or, or the band was like, it'd be cool if, if you just screamed on this part? Like, how did that come about? It was a me thing. I, I really love a, a good challenge and I believe like excelling in life, you have to do the things that you're afraid of to grow. And I, it's just something I always wanted to learn. And I already do a lot of like vocal distortion in a way with my voice. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to take one lesson um, and I'm going to learn to scream. And like, I don't know. It just like happened one day. It one like lesson. Miracle. One lesson. I took one lesson with uh, Metal Mary's or Mary, uh, Metal Mary's is her Instagram. She was phenomenal. We did like a 50 minute session and I was like, okay, should I schedule another session? And she's like, no, you're fine. Just practice. And the fucked up thing is like, I didn't even really practice. Like we went in to do um, final screams for Serpent. And my producer, Kevin was like, all right, have you been practicing? And I'm like, no, I just want to wing this. I want to just have this come out of like pure emotion, which is not like me because I'm such a planner and I, I love to be like really organized and ahead. But those screams just came out on, on the single serpent, and that's where we're at today. So, <laughs> Speaking of serpent, I, I believe that was uh, the first song we heard of yours. Somebody came on the show and was like, you got to hear Lexi Lane. She's awesome. And we, we checked it out, and we were blown away. We hit you up right away about it. Thank you for being here. You, you, said, you said Kevin was the producer of Serpent. Does he do all of your singles prior to this, or is that somebody that knew that you're working with? No, this is somebody new that I'm working with. So my my EP from 2020, um, I did that with my producer, Clint Fowler, at the time. And we're like really good friends, just different directions of life kind of happened. And I met Kevin McCombs through a mutual friend of mine, and we just hit it off right away. And now we're working on a whole album, and a lot of new music is coming soon. So Serpent's just the start of it. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's awesome. So he's so he's doing the whole album. Yeah. That's gonna be badass. Is there is there a rough timetable? I'm guessing 2024, but could we say by this time next year it's out? A hundred percent. Okay, cool. A hundred percent. We are we we're, we're actually gonna drop another single sometime in I'll just give like the late November, early December timeline. Okay. So there'll be another single out then. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just going to go through the phases and, and an album will be out in 2024 for sure. Hell yeah, very cool. Is there is there yeah. like touring plans or is it just strictly keep keep feeding music and let that kind of naturally come when it comes? Um, 
it's like a little bit of both. Touring has definitely been on the back of my mind uh, more so than usual. Um, I'd love to get out on the road sometime next year. Uh, the priority right now, obviously, is the album because I really want to have all this new music out before I go on tour. Um, but I'm hoping by this time next year that I'm on some kind of like mini tour or, you know, opening up for um, a bigger band kind of deal. Whenever I meet other inked up homies, I'm, I'm fairly inked up myself. I like to ask which one hurt the most. For me, I have a spot like right in this area like the uh oh. around under the breast breastplate area that part sucked do you have yeah. a most painful tattoo um well i feel like everyone is always like oh dude your neck had to be like fucking terrible it's not that my bad. neck was it, 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 it was bad it, okay. was, it was not great but my worst tattoo honestly the back of my calves were not fun I have one of my calves down on the back, and you're right. That one, that one sucked for sure. <laughs> it's a weird place, and like I feel like when I get tattooed on my legs, like I just started the thigh piece, and when I get tattooed on my legs, I tend to like twitch a lot. I, I don't know. My artist says it's normal, but like I feel like I twitch more than most people. So my calf was just like going off the whole time I was getting it tattooed. When you when you started to take music seriously around, you said around 14, correct? Yeah. Was it was it always rock music or was there a different style and you kind of naturally evolved into a rock and roll artist? When I was younger, I did more of the pop rock thing. So definitely not as heavy as I am now, but my goal was always to get this heavy. I just couldn't find a producer at that time um, to kind of create that style that I was really like leaning towards. And it really wasn't until I moved to L.A. that I really found, you know, even Clint in the beginning, like starting out with him. That was the start of everything. And then, you know, here I am now with Kevin. And now I'm really doing the music that I want to do. Let's ask some fun ones uh, before we before we get into the trivia part. Let's ask some fun ones. Let's say let's say uh, you're playing the whiskey tonight. I know I'm I don't live too far from the whiskey. I'm there often. But let's say you're playing the whiskey sold out show you sold out all your merch that night it's partying time tonight you just partied maybe a couple of beers i don't know but uh what's the go-to munchy snack at one or two in the morning the ultimate munchy snack after a great show hot cheetos hot cheetos so you, so you so have I a good heat tolerance yes um so i'm also like a health freak though so like i try not to do a lot of the bad food so i've cut my hot cheeto intake a lot but oh yeah that's like the main that's the main snack i could eat literally like two bags of those the big ones easily. wow wow okay yeah. cool but no no taco bell at one in the morning for sure no and i just had this conversation with somebody yesterday about taco bell like i can't get on the train i've eaten taco bell once in my life so Wow, you're missing out. I'm just saying. But uh, can you can you can you recall the artist when you were younger that that made you want to pick up a microphone and do what you do, or a particular album that was that influenced you so much you decided I want to be a musician. Um, Pat Benatar, uh, Pink, and Christina Aguilera was actually a massive one of mine when I was younger. For sure. Hell yeah. yeah. There's there's some movie that Christina yeah. Aguilera is in with Cher. I don't remember the name of it, but my wife. Burlesque. Yeah, my wife makes me watch that all the time with her. And it's actually pretty damn good, <sighs> but uh <laughs> Hell yeah. Are so you, good. So are good. you are you afraid of anything? Does anything freak you out, scare you, phobias, anything like that? Yeah, until I faced it with serpent. I had the biggest fear of snakes. And it wasn't until we did the music video for Serpent that I was like, all right, I'm going to have a snake in this music video. It's called Serpent. Like, I got to have a snake around me. So just that. And now, like, I'm smooth sailing. So there's really nothing else that, like, freaks me out. And you went, you went like, balls to the wall. It was like a big old python or something, right, that's on your shoulders? Yeah, it was, uh, it was my friend's snake. Uh, and I, like, lightly went over a couple times and, like, 
pet him. But like, it wasn't until the day of the actual shoot that I actually had him all over me and then I was holding him. So it's kind of just like, you either do this or you don't, and you're going to look like a massive pussy if you don't do this. <laughs> I love I love the lighting on the video, how they have like almost like a Morticia Adams style where they focus on the eyes uh, like that's a really yeah. cool shot that the director did uh, to do the trivia portion. A, did you bring anything hot or hot sauce? Excellent. 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 Now, the goal is for me to stump you in trivia. So you have to take a quick swig of Tapatio. But don't worry whether you get it right or wrong. I'm going to do. Uh, ghostly ghost pepper garlic hot sauce. Uh, I'm a pro. I do hot sauce every day, so don't worry about me. Uh, but I need to. I need to know yeah. if there's a movie or TV show that you've seen the most. Or if I ask you, and if I look up trivia on this movie or TV show, it's impossible I stump you because you've seen it so many times. Shrek. I'm like the biggest Shrek fan ever. <laughs> did you know this is not the trivia? But did you know that? Uh, Chris Farley was the original voice. I of... didn't know that. See, Chris... look, I should already just, you know. <laughs> Chris Farley was the original voice of Shrek, uh, and then he wasn't able to complete it, obviously, because he passed away. And then Mike Myers came in, and then uh, Mike Myers actually did the whole movie, hated it, and re-recorded every single line again with an English accent because he thought it was funnier. Oh wow! Nope. Some some I back knowledge for you. <laughs> I need to, I need a second to look. <laughs> I need a second to look up the trivia. So I'm gonna ask you a couple questions while I'm looking in the background. Is there is there ever been a plan to have a feature on a Lexi Lane song? And if so, who would you want as a feature? Oh, a hundred percent. We're actually in the works of that right now with the album. Um, I really would like two features. I'd like a female and a male. Um, this would be same song or different songs different song different song um with me out like not trying to give too much away but if i could work with anyone female wise um i'm a big fan of tati from ginger i think her vocal range is just absolutely insane i'd love to have her featured on something um and male wise i'm dying to work with noah sebastian from bad omens his voice is also just stunning in every kind of way that's got to be a pricey one, I would imagine, but that would be that would be fantastic. Oh, yeah. Both great suggestions. Uh, your first Shrek trivia. Here we go. Explain to me why it is difficult for Donkey to find the blue flower with red thorns. Okay, I remember this part of the movie. Oh, it's because he's got like ADHD, right? Like he's so preoccupied with like his own ADHD. That is not correct. <laughs> he is colorblind, so he can't see the color of the flowers. Enjoy the hot sauce. Don't worry, I'm doing it with you. It's fun while we're a mouse burning Cheers. and we're being tortured. Cheers. Cheers. Woo! <laughs> there we go. A little spice, a little sizzle. Is there is there a particular oh. place in the world that you've uh, you've always wanted to play, like a Japan and Australia, and why there? Um, I've really been wanting to get over to the UK. I don't have like a specific part of the UK, but somewhere over there, um, I just feel like that audience. Uh, react really well to my genre of music, and I, I think I would do really well over there. I feel like you would too. UK UK has a, a pretty cool music scene. I, uh, we've had people on the, from the UK before, and they've always said that they're really good about telling everybody about this band that also lives there, and like it's very good word of mouth to like spread around the news. Like you got to see this artist, blah blah blah. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, I do have a redemption Shrek question for you. See if we can stump you one more time. Don't worry, there's no more after this. We only do two. But here we go. Second second Shrek, Shrek 1 trivia. Here we go. At a point in the movie, Shrek cooks Fiona a meal. Can you name the animal that he cooks for her? I'll give you... That is 
correct. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> he cooks it rotisserie style. He says. Yes. Well done. That means we get to spin That's the good. we get to spin the wheel for you, Lexi. Let's see what happens. Nobody can see the wheel except for me and you because of the way the cameras are right this second, but it landed on chug beer. So I'm going to chug some beer um, while we're still doing this. Are you are you a car Love person? It. Do you do you enjoy cars? Uh, do you have a, a car that, let's say, the label's like, here's a million dollar advance for you. Your first thing is you're going to buy this new Toyota Supra or, or do you have a favorite car? Um... I'm definitely, like, I like nice cars. It's not, like, a major preference of mine, but if somebody was like, hey, here's a million dollars, go buy a car, I'm going to buy a G-Wagon. Because you're a G. Makes sense. Sure. Yeah, why not? A G for the G-Wagon. A G-Wagon for the G. I got it back. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> do you have any... um? Do you have any unique vocal warm-ups or, or techniques and tricks that you do before a show? And then simultaneously, the show is over. You've been, you've been singing, screaming your ass off. Now it's time to cool down the throat. Any, any tricks that you can tell us of how to prepare for, let's say you had a show the next night after this one? Um, so vocal warm-up wise, <clears throat> usually what I'll do is I'll do like a couple of my old like theater warm-ups, which are like, kind of tongue twister just to like get the mouth moving and you know get the movement going um and then usually what I'll do is I'll sing through like my one ballad or I'll sing through one ballad and like my hardest song like once because for me that really warms me up um and then when I'm done I am like drinking olive oil which coats your vocal cords uh, I'm drinking hot tea throat coat um, I have this like all natural spray called Singers and it's like a, like an all like herbal remedy kind of thing. And I'm going on vocal rest because if not, I will lose my voice. Okay. After nearly a thousand interviews I've done over the years, I've never had anyone say <laughs> olive oil. Where did you learn that? It's a lip so I've been doing olive oil since I was like, 10 years old is it I, I think it's a theater thing I don't know but like if you think about it it's literally coating your vocal cords so what I would do before I'd go on stage I would just like chug the smallest bit of olive oil hit it back with like some hot tea and that's it and it and works I've never heard that and it's, it's it's a miracle like so all the singers out there if you haven't tried that and you need something olive oil that's the key that's what we've all been missing that's what yeah, you're missing. Hell yeah. That is amazing. Lexi, is there anything that we may not have covered today before I ask a final question or two that uh, you'd like us to know? Anything you want us to promote or you promote? Um, anything that we may have not touched touch base on? Um, I think we really hit everything. Just, yeah, I'm Lexi Lane, and I have a new single coming out within the next two months. If you haven't heard uh, Serpent, stream it on all streaming platforms now. My Instagram again is Lexi underscore Lane and all of my links are in my bio. Do you feel like you noticed a jump in, in viewers or, or content reach since working with Kevin and having Serpent come out? Like did, did numbers kind of grow a little bit after that video? A thousand percent. To be honest, I was really, really surprised where my reach went from me not putting out music since 2020. Um, the views on the YouTube video, I was not expecting. Um, yeah, it, it, it really has been such a positive feedback for Serpent. It really has been. So I just hope to continue to have that still and have it grow and gain new fans over time. And I think it's going to be good. I'm off to a really great start. So I have no complaints. We're rooting for you. My final question, uh, at some point in every musician's career, they've made a terrible mistake, whether that they invested a bunch of money that just didn't go anywhere and they could have used it for something else. Is there a time that you made a mistake that you can tell us so we can tell a local band that's just starting, don't do this? Lexi Lane said it's not the way to go. Um, when I first moved to L.A., uh, I went through five different managers in like 
first month and a half I was here. Month and a half. And month and a half. Welcome wow. to LA. Yes. Um, and the thing is, it's, it's just, it's the money game, you know, like make sure you're working with people that really have your best interest and whether the money is there or not yet, like they still want to be a part of your career and they want to be a part of your journey. For me, I realized that that is the most important thing is having an amazing, supportive, genuine team behind you. And I definitely have found that. And I'm super grateful because it took me years to finally find that. So in a month and a half, so that's what, like eight or nine days, 10 days per manager. Oh yeah, they just overlapped. Cause I was so eager at the time. I'm like, okay, well, this is not working. This person wants like just a bunch of money from me, but isn't promising me anything. So I just kept going through everything. And then I was like, all right, fuck this. I'm going to do this myself. And that's just when I started doing it by myself. <laughs> I, my my last question is was was COVID the reason no music between 20, 2020 and twenty twenty three or was there something uh, else going on and that was the reason no singles came out? So during COVID was actually when I did put out uh, my first EP, Sinner and Saint. So it came out at a, a strange time. So I it felt like natural that I had at least a year go by, but then my producer at the time, just different directions. So I was really just waiting to find somebody that I that wanted to work with me and that I wanted to work with. And that's why there was such a, a massive gap. But to be honest, I'm happy there was. I, I needed that time to like grow individually and figure out what it was exactly that I was looking to do. And I did, so. Hell yeah, well we support you. We love Serpent. I actually jammed most of your catalog today. And there was one uh, I want to say it was the darkness of your heart, which was probably one, what your first single. Oh God, yeah, that's, I, that that I one kind of stood out to me as co was completely different than Serpent, but I still thought it was badass. But you're awesome. We're rooting for you. Like I said, uh, good luck on the album when it's when it comes out sometime next year. Maybe we can have you back on and promote it. But uh, I hope that you have a fantastic day. And uh, because I also live in Southern California, maybe we can book you for you and the band for a show in the future. That'd be awesome. But uh, I would love, love hell yeah, awesome. Well, Lexi, have a great day and thank you for giving us some time. We really appreciate it. You too. Thank you for having me. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band Smokeout.